Welcome to this presentation about the Workbooks API and the Process Engine. Things I'll talk about today begin with why you might choose to use the API and when you might decide that you don't actually need to use the API. There are a lot of features in Workbooks which don't require the API to achieve some pretty powerful effects including some simple workflow. Having decided that you want to use the API we'll talk about how you do so whether you would use external access where a external service from workbooks is accessing workbooks remotely over HTTP or whether you want to use the process engine which is a little bit easier and uh, is the preferred way of implementing most API integrations. We'll talk about the process engine, how you use that, the different types of processes that you can create and then we'll talk a bit about the workbooks API methods which basically allow you to create, update, read and delete records inside workbooks and a couple of special methods that do some additional things like uh, fetching CSVs or running reports and so on. We'll talk about the types of process you can run inside the process engine. These include scheduled processes that run from time to time, process buttons that you can attach to a form in workbooks and web processes where you can show a web form perhaps and react to the input on that form. Finally, I'll talk a bit about how processes are run in the process engine and some of the constraints that they run under. So, first of all, why would you use the API? There actually are quite a few things you can do in workbooks for which the API is not required. So I've listed a few of them here. For example, if you want to capture a simple lead or case from a form, you could use the web to case facility or the web to lead facility. Uh, basically that allows you to define an HTML form inside workbooks, uh, a key which decides where that object will be assigned to when it's created and who it will be owned by. So this is the fastest way of getting an object into workbooks and you don't need any programming skills just the sort of webmaster style HTML coding and editing skills that are reasonably widespread in the web development community so your web designer should be able to help you with that. Uh, you might choose to generate PDFs or uh, send templated emails, to use mail shots etc. Obviously those are integrated inside workbooks, there's no programming or API requirement there. If you want to do workflow you can do quite a lot with a simple uh, custom form layout so by changing the form layout that's used as a record progresses through its life cycle you can achieve some workflow. So for example you may have one form layout that is used when a record is draft and another form layout which is used when it's assigned to the finance team. Now, by doing that you can restrict the availability of fields and pick list options and can drive a workflow process without needing any API coding at all. You can do data import uh, very effectively without using the API. We have had customers code specialized import routines using the API, but in the main we suggest that you use the built-in uh, import facility. It has got some pretty rich capabilities including the ability to import into multiple different records concurrently and to do some pretty sophisticated matching. Reports are powerful in workbooks and without writing any API code again you can generate some pretty effective reports and dashboards and in fact when you come to use the API you may choose to use a report as the source of some data that you subsequently process using the API. So those are all the, those are all the things that you might choose not to use the API for. Why would you want to use the API? Well it is a very powerful facility it's not particularly limited in terms of the things you can interact with inside workbooks. So things we use the API for inside workbooks ourselves are email to case for example where we monitor a mailbox using the IMAP protocol and as emails arrive in there a scheduled process retrieves the email, creates cases, looks up to see whether the uh, email already exists. If it doesn't then it will create the case. If it does then it will associate the email with the existing case it will send an acknowledgement back to the sender of the original email which is a templated email 
so you're using the workbooks templated email facility there generate a nice uh, formatted email response and finally that process will move the case that's been created or updated into the appropriate status so we can start driving a workflow and make sure the case is handled in the appropriate timescale. Our integrations with MailChimp, Constant Contact, DotMailer and HubSpot are all implemented using the API um, through PHP scripts as it happens under the process engine and in all of those cases we are synchronizing records of various types between workbooks and a third party system and some of those integrations, in fact all of those integrations are bi-directional and have the concept of state so they know what records they've synchronized and what they still need to do. The integration with Sage via a third party called uh, Iger Systems, they've implemented something called SageLink which will move records in and out of Sage Line 50. Uh, OneSAS integration is an integration with uh, a cloud hub solution if you like where many integrations exist with one SAS and they they act as effectively a clearing house for records uh, in and out of various cloud services they've implemented a workbooks API connector the outlook connector the workbooks outlook connector is another API client as is the mobile client uh, the mobile client is using metadata retrieved from workbooks which define how the workbook's data structures work in order to drive its user interface and that's a completely standalone API client. Um, we've done a lot of implementations for customers for specific requirements that they may have so for example we've created process buttons to generate lots of line items on an order reflecting a delivery schedule so the particular model here was you have a magazine and you want to order some advertising slots over a period of several months rather than creating a dozen line items representing each issue of the magazine that you want to purchase a slot in and some of those uh, slots may be for different sizes of advert what you instead do is you say you want 12 line items to be created by putting a field at the top of the form you run a process button script which then says okay you want 12 line items creating I'll add 12 line items and I'll populate them with some other custom field values from the top of the form which represent the type of advert and so on having done so you can manually edit a couple of those line items to make them the Christmas edition perhaps where you want a bigger advert and then you post the form uh, you can calculate field values by using a process button or by saving the record and having a process run as the record is saved so although that's not real-time editing of a field value uh, where one is dependent on the other it does happen whenever you save the record and refresh it uh, finally you've got sales lead categorization which is another one we use internally here in workbooks where the sales leads that come into our organization get categorized analyzed looked up for for example find out where the IP address corresponds to in terms of which country the lead came from and then assigned to the appropriate uh, channel partner or sales representative to follow up. So those are all the use cases for the API and really there are a lot more use cases than that that I could have described. So what is the API? Well API stands for Application Programmatic Interface. What it means is the interface that Workbooks exposes to allow programs to interact with it. So it's a well-defined interface and it isn't going to change uh, without good notice. In fact we work very hard to make sure it doesn't change and that we don't break existing integrations with workbooks. So it's a set of web services delivered over uh, web protocols, specifically uh, secure socket layers, SSL. In other words it's an encrypted connection so it's reasonably secure. It has the concept of authentication and authorization built in so that processes and, and API clients have the right capabilities. The API is stateless as far as we don't record state between requests. We expect a, re a request from the client to be re re resulting in a response from the service, i.e. workbooks, which is pretty much self-contained. And those operations are things like create, read, update and delete, as I said earlier. And it's been organized 
using a couple of principles which are today pretty widespread in lots of cloud services. We are RESTful, which means that we use a particular style of API, and uh, we use a response which is encoded using something called JSON, which is JavaScript object notation, particularly uh, consumable by JavaScript clients like our own desktop, but also very easy to I interpret and parse by many languages. So that's what we use there. Final thing I'll say is that the API is batched. In other words, you can operate on many records at once. So you might send an update or a create statement to Workbooks saying create these 100 records and Workbooks would do that work and re return 100 responses all as one transaction, which basically said these have all been created. So it's very efficient if you work in that way. And I'd encourage you to batch any requests that you can because it will make things faster. Right, in the next session, we'll talk about how you call the API and where you might choose to run that code.